around here. There's a bunch of crooks around here. You ain't supposed to be in that job, boy. Get out of there, man. No, that's a total no, man. Bad coming. Is, is my salary going up? The Hamian people got to wake up. This is my five cents, and I approve this message. The FNM deputy leader receives disconcerting death threats. A convicted human smuggler sentenced today. A suspect wearing an ankle bracelet shot by police, plus lights out on New Providence. We've got those stories and a whole lot more tonight. I'm Vonnie Toot and MB12 starts now. Topping news tonight, Free National Movement Deputy Leader Loretta Butler-Turner is speaking out after allegedly receiving death threats. In a sit-down interview with NB12 at her home today, the Long Island Member of Parliament said she received a graphic letter warning that she would be killed if she doesn't resign. They were very... They were very graphic in what they were going to do to me before they took me out. In late March, Butler Turner says she received a letter graphically detailing how her life would be taken if she does not step down. In fear of her life, she says she reported the death threat to the commissioner of police and handed over the letter in hopes of authorities finding its sender. And about the third week of March of this year, I reported to the police department and gave to them a copy of a letter that threatened my life in the event that I did not resign. And in the interest of allowing the work of the department to be done, I determined it was best not to say anything. However, after three months of silence, she is finally speaking out. This after she says she received another warning. I received information from individuals who have advised me to be very careful. I don't, I, don't, I don't know where to go from here in terms of what I should do next, given the fact that at this stage, um, I think three months is a very long time to have heard back from the police department with regards to my initial um, threat. The FNM deputy leader would not speculate on who may have sent the letter. We asked her if she believes it is politically motivated. Obviously, there are some people that don't want me to do, do my duties. It's not the first time the FNM MP and mother of two has received death threats. She says she received letters of a similar nature twice during her five years as a cabinet minister in the Ingram administration. She says she notified police on both occasions and received additional security. However, Butler Turner says she is more fearful this time around. The fear that I have now is that outside of the letter, before when I got the, the death threats, I knew something was done. I'm not sure what has been done since March. I am now considering, do I have to do something to take extraordinary measures? Nevertheless, Loretta Butler Turner made it clear she's not going anywhere. I don't plan to resign. I mean, it's been three months and I haven't resigned. I do not plan to resign. I, I, I plan to continue in what I'm doing. The reality is this. I come from a background where death is a very real thing. I don't fear death. I just fear cowards who want to make such threats. Head of the Central Detective Unit, Superintendent Paul Roll said he did not wish to comment on police investigations into the matter. Meantime, several calls placed to Police Commissioner Ellison Greenslade were not returned up to news time. A 24-year-old Jamaican woman was sentenced to 15 years in prison today after she was found guilty three months ago. It's the country's first human trafficking conviction. Dana Smith reports. 
Chevenise Hall arrived to the Supreme Court this morning handcuffed and flanked by officers. On March 26, she was found guilty on four counts of trafficking in persons and two counts of unlawfully withholding the victim's passports. Prosecutors said Hall forced two women into her prostitution ring in January 2013. The women testified they met Hall in Jamaica, who promised them she could get them jobs. However, Hall seized their passports once they came to the country and told told them they would have to prostitute themselves. The women were restricted to an apartment in Grand Bahama. Hall's guilty verdict was the Bahamas' first conviction for human trafficking, something that was noted in the U.S. State Department's recently released 2014 Trafficking in Persons report. In Supreme Court Justice John Isaac's court today, Hall's attorney Jaira Mangra asked the court for mercy in the sentencing. Mangra noted Hall's age, stating she's still quite a young person. He said Hall has no prior convictions and is deserving of a second chance. Mangra also noted Hall has broken no prison rules during the 17 months she spent incarcerated. He said Hall is a person who is more than suitable and can benefit from a rehabilitation process in prison ahead of an eventual re-entry into society. Also addressing the court, Director of Public Prosecutions Vinette Graham Allen. She noted human trafficking is defined in many sources as modern-day slavery, and victims are sometimes forced, deceived, or defrauded. Graham Allen said Hall used her educated background to deceive the victims, noting Hall brought them into the country under the pretenses they would find jobs, but then withheld their passport, threw away their luggage, and forced them into prostitution. She said the victims were in prison. Graham Allen also noted the victims' testimonies where they spoke to the emotional distress they felt. Graham Allen said the victims were devastated, humiliated, and violated. Before sentencing was handed down, Justice Isaacs said Hall used her intelligence to go over to the dark side, preying on her vulnerable victims and providing misery. Isaac said Hall has shown no remorse or compassion about what was done to the victims, but Isaacs added he did not find it appropriate to deliver a life imprisonment sentence. For the first four counts, Hall was sentenced to 15 years in prison each, and for counts five and six, she was sentenced to seven years in prison each. The sentences will run concurrently and include the 17 months Hall has already spent in custody, meaning Hall will spend the next 13 years and five months at Her Majesty's prison. Justice Isaacs also informed Hall of her right to an appeal. From the Supreme Court for NB12, I'm Dana Smith. Police shot an electronically monitored suspect today after he was allegedly caught breaking into a home on Turnquest Avenue in Stapleton Gardens. Head of the Firearms Tracing and Investigation Unit, Superintendent Ken Strawn, says residents reached out to police about a suspicious vehicle in the area. Officers proceeded um, to an apartment complex where it was observed that the individual who was drive one of two persons who was driving that vehicle had forcibly entered a dwelling uh, committing an offense therein. Um, the officers having come into contact with the individual, uh, he charged the officers uh, with an offensive instrument. Uh, that individual was subsequently shot. Uh, he was pursued through several yards from where the incident took place and taken down just a short distance um, just to the east of where I'm standing. Strawn said the suspect was armed with an offensive instrument, but he did not specify what it was. He also said that the suspect was wearing an ankle bracelet and the car and instrument have been retrieved. We have the vehicle in question, uh, which we have some concerns about, and a full-scale investigation is currently taking place into this um, matter. Assistant Superintendent Michael Moxie reassured residents of Stapleton Gardens that police are actively doing what they can to ensure their safety. That the police are up and about, we're aware of some of the situations that are, that are occurring in Stapleton, but throughout the country, so they can feel assured that the police force is willing to participate and apprehend offenders, be they on ankle monitors or whatever. So they can feel free to go about their daily chores as they normally would, knowing full well that the police are here to support you, to protect you, and to ensure that your environment and your communities are safe. The Bahamas Electricity Corporation is blaming today's island-wide power outage on severe thunderstorms, which officials say damaged key infrastructure at BEC's Clifton Pier power plant. 
As a result, several units tripped offline. BEC said in a statement this afternoon, residents of eastern, southern and northern New Providence were impacted when lightning struck the corporation's equipment. According to the statement, BEC teams have restored power supply to the majority of impacted customers and they are working to restore supply to remaining customers. When MB12 returns, the latest on NSA spy claims. So stay with us.